high. So crowdfunding has become a very popular way to raise money in the recent years. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the two types of crowdfunding that are currently there and which startups may benefit from pursuing each of them and what are some of the things that you need to consider if you are uh, going to use this form of financing. My name is Victoria Yampolsky and I run the Startup Station, a comprehensive resource for modeling and valuing early stage ventures. In this method, you use a platform as an intermediary to get access to a pool of professional investors. Um, an example of such a platform is Seed Invest. And there are many others that are uh, available and there's like new ones being formed every day, okay? So there are two things to consider here. Number one, if you pursue this form of crowdfunding, you still have to comply with all the laws and regulations uh, for a regular equity raise, okay? So you have to make sure that you know those laws and that you meet all of the regulatory requirements. And number two, you have to be cognizant of the fees that the platform will charge for giving you access to that pool of investors. The fees can come in two forms. It can be a percentage of equity in the company that they will take or a percentage of funds raised. Sometimes it's both. Finally, um, I want you to know that there's only so much money you can raise via this method, typically up to a million dollars. The average amount raised is somewhere around 250000 So this method of financing is really for your very first round. You should not expect to use the same method for future rounds. Under this method, you use a platform such as Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and you do not offer equity to your investors under that scheme. Instead, you either offer rewards or recognition if it's a donation. And um, under this uh, scheme, the investors are not professional investors, but basically anybody who would uh, want to support your product believes in your mission and want to uh, be involved in bringing that product to market. So when would that be a good choice, right? If you have a consumer product or you have a startup with a social cause or if you have a creative um, endeavor, this method of crowdfunding could be a good option for you because um, you get the chance to interact directly with the consumer. How much money you can raise via this method? Again, it's not that much. However, there have been cases where uh, significant funds were raised via Kickstarter or Indiegogo. What should you keep in mind here? There are sites that will not give you any money until you reach uh, your goal, right? So Kickstarter has that requirement. Indiegogo does not have that requirement. This is something you have to be cognizant of as you're setting up your campaign uh, and as you're thinking how much money you want to target raising, right? But it needs to be reasonable. You can't say I'm going to raise $10 and then raise $200,000, right? If you want to raise $200,000, maybe you set your goal at $150,000, which is still reasonable and allows you to reach your goals. Uh, but then if you don't raise a full $200,000, you'll still be able to get access to the funds. Similarly to um, equity crowdfunding platforms, Kickstarter and Indiegogo will keep a percentage of the funds, but they will not ever take any equity in your company. So to learn more about traditional financing vehicles, which are equity safe and convertible debt, please take course number five on the www.thesetupstation.com. Thank you for watching and as always, see you next time.